Today, I'm gonna to take you through my process of finding a foreground. They take a while to find. Sometimes they can be really frustrating and other times they just don't work. I know of one in this location, but I wanna find two or three different ones. The forecast said it was gonna be good this morning and it just looks like it's closing in. We've got 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts. Should be a good day though. Now, the first thing I do is just have my camera out. And that's where one of these clips comes in handy. I leave my tripod on my bag, leave the filters in the bag as well. I just have my camera ready to go. I'll literally just put it in aperture priority and try and find a foreground or try and find different compositions. And this is the part of photography that is a little bit like hunting. On the walk on the way up here, I spotted this kind of V in the wall where it's broken down a little bit. So I'm gonna see how it looks on the back of the camera. It's okay, but it's a bit messy. This foreground element here really messes up the shot quite a bit. It could work as a landscape that way. This could be a potential, but these walls are really dominating. They're making the background look less significant in the shot. You need the foreground to complement the background, not dominate it. So I'm sure I can find some better shots here. Now with foregrounds, it's really easy to find yourself just wandering around for hours trying to find that elusive foreground. You could be looking for leading lines, different textures, patterns, shapes, but the main thing is to have your camera out, no tripod or anything like that in this first stage. With all of these reeds, they're all pointing out of the shot. So you need either a leading line coming in, the pattern not to take the viewer's eye out of the shot, it all needs to link up. Now here, this might look like a good foreground. There's lots of texture in this grass, but it just seems a little bit boring. And I'll show you what I mean. See, there's just not much there. The grass dominates that bottom half of the shot. It doesn't lead you up to the mountain. Wet feet, oh. <laughs> there's so much water coming down this river. <laughs> now this one's pretty good. It seems like it would work. However, when I get down low, I kind of lose the perspective of the stream. And if I'm too high, I've got loads of the mid ground in, which is just so chaotic. So it's getting the balance between having just a jumbled mess in the middle and having a little bit of order. I'm finding it quite tricky. I found a few that I'm okay with, but I want one that really stands out. Now, one potential are trees like this, but they do come with their own problems. They move around, so if you wanna do any long exposures, you basically can't, and you'll have to do a short exposure for the bush, and then a long exposure for everything else, and then you end up blending your shots together. And also, especially ones like this, they're really big. So to get them in your foreground, you've gotta walk backwards. And that's the thing with foregrounds as well. If they're very small, with a super wide angle lens, you can get really close to them to make them look bigger in your frame to almost balance out the size of the foreground and the background. But if they're big things like this, you then have to back off quite a bit, which will then change your composition and then maybe change the focal length you'll end up using. The one good thing about shooting in aperture priority is you don't have to worry about your settings. You're just taking photos. And these aren't for keepers. These are just to see what the composition will look like. I'm shooting with my 15 millimeter. I got it at F11. The ISO's at 4,000, 1 60th of a second. So quite random settings. But once I find that foreground element, that's when I'll get the camera on the tripod and then start setting up properly. Now this one, there's almost too much water in the foreground. So that is like dominating the shot. That, your eye goes straight to this and then maybe to the mountain. That's too dominating for me in this shot. You just don't want that foreground to completely dominate the shot and end up 
being too much of the star of the scene. Now, I think I might have found one. Got this stream coming down and into the shot. Got a tree in the shot as well, and then driven in the background. So before I get my tripod out, I'm gonna just use my camera like I already have been and try and find a composition. So before I even touch my tripod, I know exactly where the camera is gonna go. And that's the thing with tripods. Once you get your camera on the tripod, it's really hard to actually move it around. You can move it around, but there's changing the leg sizes, changing the angle of the head. And I think psychologically, that makes us as photographers just then leave that camera there, take the shot and then move on. So get your tripod out at the last possible moment. So I think I've found two compositions. I'll press record on this camera so I can show you what I mean. So my first composition, I think, will be around here. We've got this leading line coming around and in and down and to the mountain. We've got a nice tree over here. So I'm gonna put that one as a landscape shot. Also, because it's really dark and gloomy, I'm probably not gonna use any filters. I'll just shoot with a narrower aperture to blur the water a little bit. But I wanna get texture in that water. So I'm probably gonna shoot with maybe a one sixth or a one third shutter speed and then adjust the other two settings to shoot. You're probably wondering why I keep putting my camera down. That's the only downside to these capture clips. When you're taking things out of your bag, if you just drop it down, your camera can bang on the floor. So I always take it off, put it down, lens facing away from the wind, and then put my bag down. I think I'm gonna shoot about this height. And because I am shooting with a 15 millimeter, I really need to make sure I don't get the legs of the tripod in the shot. So I'm gonna check the bottom edge of that frame as I'm setting up. So for all of those test shots, I was in aperture priority, but now I want control over all three settings. So I'm gonna switch it to manual mode. And now I'm just juggling those settings. I've got one third of a second, F16, ISO 160. I've just got the zebras in the sky. And that seems okay. So on self timer, I'll check the foreground focus. That looks good. I'll take the shot. Actually, I think one third is too slow. So, one sixth. That's a bit better. And maybe even faster. So I'm changing the shutter speed and then I'm changing the ISO to kind of counterbalance that out. Now, one thing that I always do in the field, and I've learned this the hard way, is to check the composition. So once you've taken it, have a look around the frame and see how you could maybe improve on that shot. If you do that, you might think that the camera a bit further back would work better or a bit closer would be better. The worst thing is getting the shot, getting back home, and then looking at the shot and then figuring out what you should have done. This is the most frustrating thing, and I have done this more times than I'd like to admit. Right, let's have a look at this. Water's coming in, that's coming around and in. The trees there. Now, I'm not 100% sure about that shot, but I'm gonna get a portrait shot, and then I'm gonna move on. And this is another thing with finding foregrounds. Don't waste too much time at one location. If it's not working, move on to the next location. So I think the next one was about here. Or could we go closer? Ooh, that looks really nice there. Now I'm gonna have to undersling this to get as low as I want to. And with the Arca Swiss system, just give it a wiggle just to make sure it's clamped in. Because the worst thing that could happen is your camera falls in the stream. Then I'll check my focus. First of all, on the mountain in the background. Yep, that's good. And then in the foreground. Then I'll take the shot. Now I've got those couple of keepers in the bag, I'm just gonna kind of mess around and see if I can get any better than what I've got already. I did say take the shot and move on, but I kind of like this and I'm gonna get a few more shots before I do move on. <laughs> wow. That was a lot of fun. Got a few different shots, a few different compositions. Not sure which one will work, but this is the thing, going out and enjoying what you're doing. And I love doing things like this. Right, let's see what else we can find.
Now I've found a grouping of rocks and the river is just down there but I'm gonna try and exclude that river. What I've got in mind is these three rocks in a row. I'm thinking somewhere here. Just gotta check focus. Driven is in focus. There's that foreground in focus, just about. And this one, you do have to use quite a high shutter speed because those bushes are moving all over the place. Unless you want a little bit of blur in that, but that's up to you. Now I see why when people come to this location, they just use that stream as the foreground element. It's really compelling. It shows movement. You can get texture in there. You can really blur the water out. You can do so much in this location, but I'm still determined to get one other shot that doesn't have the river in it. Don't be slippery. <laughs> now I finally got across the stream. And if you are taking photographs around moving water like this, just really take care. I'm a pretty competent swimmer, but I know if I fall in, I'm gonna be screwed. Now, another thing that you can use as a leading line is a footpath. Just make sure it's not just a dirty bit of mud. When there are stones and steps in it, it can look really good. But like I said, if it's just a strip of mud, it just looks dirty and horrible. So I finally got to the top where we've got this wall. The path over there, there's loads of walkers, a photographer as well, so I kind of left them to it. But I noticed this other sty over the wall here. Now I'm gonna try and make this the foreground element. Still got the 15 millimeter on. Got it in aperture priority because I'm shooting handheld. And this is why it's really important to take a shot and then just review your images back. With this shot, I don't know, it just looks too messy. You've got the waterfall coming in one side and it just doesn't work. I'm thinking maybe looking along the wall. I'll give that a go. It's a tricky one because the wall doesn't really point to Triven, which is the main element in the background. The one thing that drew me to this side was how steep it is here with this wall. So I might have a walk up and see if there's any other compositions up there. I want to get this wall in, it's just finding the right composition. So this composition is just way too messy. It's too much in the shot. You've got the river cutting through, you've got the wall cutting through, you've got all the dead bracken, you've got a little bit of peat bog, you've got the lake, you've got Triven, you've got the devil's kitchen. There's just way too much in this shot. Now I'm gonna get a few shots anyway, because I might get the shots back onto my computer and actually start to like them there. So. I'm gonna grab this opportunity anyway. I might as well while I'm here. After editing these photos, I kind of like these ones at the top now. So it's amazing to see the difference between how I felt on the day and how I feel about these photos now. Now I think I've found a few different compositions and a few different foregrounds other than that river. And I'm gonna put them on the screen now. Let me know in the comments below, which one you prefer. Do you prefer the rocks? the path, some gorse bushes, some reeds as well, or the wall. It'd be great to hear your thoughts and it'd be great to hear what you think about these foreground elements. Mm -hmm.